masturbation and ED, the brain connection. Welcome back to another episode of Porn Brain Rewire, the podcast with the hostess with the mostess, me, Dr. Trish Lee. I'm so glad you're here today because I know there's a lot of confusion around masturbation and is it good for you? Is it bad for you? Is it good to do it a lot? Is it okay to do it a little? And how does that connect to sexual arousal dysfunction, specifically ED? Now, let's dig in. Today, what we're going to do is, number one, talk about why people masturbate compulsively and what is the difference between compulsive or excessive masturbation and those who might have a quote unquote healthy masturbation habit. We're going to start there. Then number two, I'm going to connect the dots between compulsive masturbation and sexual arousal dysfunction and ED erectile dysfunction. And then number three, stay with me because of course it's your brain hack strategy for the day, what you can do to either establish a healthy masturbation habit or to decide that staying away from masturbation might be for you. Now, before we dive in, I want to share that this podcast is part of my outreach program to help people develop healthy sexuality and to get on purpose in their life. I have established a nonprofit organization called Porn Brain Prevention. It's at pornbrainprevention.org. And if you're inspired by the information that you're learning here on this podcast, please go over to pornbrainprevention.org and donate. That nonprofit is designed to pay it forward and go upstream to teenagers and to young people and help them stay away from hypersexuality in the first place. So join me in the mission because we know giving is good for your brain. So jump on over there and donate if you're inspired. I totally appreciate it and the money is going to a very good use. Okay, now let's get into number one. Number one is masturbation and why people do it. So it may be that you've developed a masturbation habit from when you were young. So you might have been 10, 12 years of age and you learned about masturbation and guess what? It felt good. And especially if it felt good in the midst of a dysfunctional family or bullying or a life, the human condition that is difficult and didn't feel good, it became an outlet for mood regulation, self-soothing, self-stimulation to feel good in a world that sometimes or all the time felt bad. Now, fast forward 10, 15, 20, 40 years later, and it's still a habit that you're using. Now, after a certain amount of time, it becomes a habit to not feel bad, which is very different than a habit to feel good. And the way that that happens is that use becomes misuse, becomes abuse, becomes compulsion. So when we, tr when we kind of jump over from abuse to compulsion, now your, ne your brain needs to masturbate to not feel bad because it's used to getting a drip of dopamine, a flood of dopamine to either get through the day, to be able to sleep or to offset stress and boredom. If this resonates with you, stay with me because I've got a lot more to share. So the idea is that it's an emotionally immature habit that developed in childhood to offset stress. But as you grow older, you should be able to develop a healthy toolbox of mood regulation activities and exercises so you don't have to go to that one activity to not feel bad. So when you're using healthy coping mechanisms, healthy activities, they will give your brain the healthy amount of dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, what's called the happiness trifecta. If you keep going to masturbation, and especially if it's coupled with pornography or fantasy, which it usually is, you are giving your brain unhealthy, supernormal, high level doses of dopamine, creating a dopamine dependency, reinforcing compulsion, the need to go back to masturbation to not feel bad. 
So many people are caught in this loop and they'll use masturbation to either give them some energy for the day. Dopamine hit, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to give you, you're going to feel a little uh, numbed out if it's not too much, but you're also going to feel less stress for the day. Many people develop a morning masturbation habit to get themselves through the day. A vast majority of people develop an evening or a nighttime masturbation habit to fall asleep. But what you don't understand is that you're robbing your brain's ability to be able to enjoy your day and get through your day with healthy internal mood regulation skills. And you're robbing your brain of the ability to learn to fall asleep in a healthy way and to stay asleep. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you is that if you use masturbation to fall asleep, it might help you fall asleep. It certainly doesn't usually help you stay asleep all night long. Most people will wake up after three or four hours. And that's because you crashed your brain into sleep. You didn't guide it into the sleep cycle. So that's why I'm here. I want you to sleep better. I want you to perform better. I want you to feel better. And I definitely want you to get on purpose in your work, your life with your people, in your hobbies, and develop a healthy sexual relationship that involves intimacy. Now, if you're using masturbation as a consistent habit for mood regulation, it is taking away from your ability to develop healthy sexuality that involves intimacy. Intimacy is connection, it's love, it's joy, it's having a lovely, pleasurable experience with a partner. You don't get to do that to the same level or as often as you would be able to if you didn't have a compulsive masturbation habit. Now, if you've always had a compulsive masturbation habit, you might not even know what I'm talking about. So many people that I work with tell me, I didn't know what you were talking about until I experienced it. My relationship's better than ever. My sex life is better than ever. My brain feels better than ever. My work's better than ever. I feel stronger. I'm working out. I'm on purpose. Got back into my hobbies. My life with my children and my family and my friends, all of it is better. And I know what you're thinking. Aren't you just uh, being very grandiose about this idea of masturbation impacting all of those things? The answer is no, and this is why. And we're gonna move into the connection between masturbation and ED. Number two is that when you have a compulsive habit, and we do need to talk about what that is, what happens is you have too much dopamine flowing in your brain and you need to keep those levels up. So let's call it level 15 stimulation from super normal or higher than healthy levels of mental and physical stimulation. So fantasy and porn, higher than healthy levels of mental sexual stimulation. Masturbation is a higher physical stimulation than you would likely have with a healthy sex life and interaction with your partner. That's why your brain is going there. It wants to go there maybe even more than it wants to be with a partner because of the super normal stimulation level 15. So when you have level 15 need in your brain, it keeps driving you back to masturbation. On a daily basis, some people masturbate five, 10 times a day because they keep having to hit that easy button to keep the dopamine flowing. But when you do that, it desensitizes the D2 dopamine receptors in the reward center in your brain. We know this from science. So once your brain becomes desensitized, it no longer gets aroused by anything besides a level 15 stimulus. And if you keep going at level 15, before you know it, you need a level 20 stimulus. That is also proven by science due to tolerance building. So the idea is if you keep needing 15 level, then now it's time to be with your partner on a good day, she's an eight, on a tired, exhausted, I worked and raised five kids day, she's feasibly a four, and it's the human condition. Back to the human condition, still a difficult one. So the idea is if you need 15, level eight, not gonna do it for you. That's a seven point spread. Level four, 
absolutely not going to do it for you. So what's the solution? We're going to talk about that in the brain hack strategy. But first, let's talk about, OK, what is compulsive? I had a meeting yesterday and I was talking to a young woman and hey, if you're listening and she was saying that her friends were saying that, you know, that I'm crazy for talking about only masturbating every two weeks to one time a month. And I've already done a video on this concept of talking about testosterone levels and trying to keep those neurochemicals and hormones in a healthy, balanced manner. If you keep going back to masturbation too much, you, you change the way your brain uses electrical energy, the way it uses neurotransmitters, the way hormones are utilized the way the electrical energy flows from your brain into your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. It really upsets everything. So less is more when it comes to masturbation. And I know you might think, you know, I've been doing this for my whole life. It's part of my lifestyle. It is part of a hyper sexual lifestyle. If you're masturbating every day, every couple days, even one time a week. So I know from working with thousands of people that, you know, to go from masturbating every day to masturbating one time a month probably isn't going to happen for you right away. That's why you need the brain hack strategy. But just recognize this is the way that you can test if you have a compulsive masturbation habit. Don't masturbate. Tell yourself you're not going to masturbate for a month and see what happens in your brain and your body. So again, many people masturbate because they have the urge to. The urge is a call for dopamine, for mood regulation through excessive dopamine to offset stress or boredom. And boredom is actually lack of overstimulation. It's not actually boredom. Nobody knows how to be bored anymore. So try to go a week, try to go a month and see what happens. And when it gets strange, and when it gets exhausting and when it gets weird for you and your brain is trying to conjure up any reason to masturbate and you feel like you need to nine out of 10, 9.999 out of 10, or you're going to explode or die, then now you know you have a need to masturbate to not feel bad. When you stay away from masturbation in this test, you might find that your anxiety levels increase. You become angry, you become irritable, you become exhausted, you become overwhelmed, you feel depressed. For the short run, trust me, in the long run, after your brain recalibrates, you're gonna feel like a rock star. But getting to no masturbation would be an amazing feat for you. And let's move to number three, which is your brain hack strategy. Why would you ever decide not to masturbate like thousands of men are doing right now? Thousands of people are doing right now, including women. They are deciding not to masturbate because they know it has a hold on their brain. That's why I want you to do this test so that you can figure out I'm not talking trash here. I'm spitting straight facts. What I tell you is true. When you test this and you try not to, you're going to look for ways to self-regulate and to self-soothe and self-stimulate. Your brain is going to start doing some weird things to you because it needs it and it's going to prove to you that you need it. So when people figure that out, you know, it goes back to me always saying, control your brain or it'll control you. People don't want to be controlled by a substance or a behavior. This behavior is controlling a lot of people. It might be controlling you. So why would you decide to give it up is because it no longer fits in the lifestyle that you're trying to create. Every action, every thought, every urge that you respond or react to, it all leads to the lifestyle that you get. We all forget we're creators in our life. This life isn't happening to us. We're creating it by reacting to these automatic urges that you've had since you were 10. So the idea is that every action that you take moves you towards your goal or moves you away from your goal. 
So if you want to be able to self-regulate and to control your own brain, if you want to stay away from porn, if you want to have an amazing relationship and sex life in the real world with a real human being who wants to be with you, masturbation doesn't fit into that formula. It's not a piece of that puzzle. The pieces to that puzzle are regulating your brain back to healthy arousal levels. What does that mean? No longer a need for 15, where your brain feels great getting a level eight or nine because a level five is that balanced, healthy baseline level of arousal. So now when you get an eight, that's three levels higher than your arousal state throughout the day. That feels good. That's what I want you to get back to. That's why people decide masturbation's not for them anymore. They don't want to keep giving their brain level 15. Now here's another uh, nugget to chew on or food for thought is that what you're linking masturbation to in terms of fantasy or pornography becomes the thing that's giving you the level 15 feeling. So if you're fantasizing about a past partner, if you're fantasizing about a porn actress, if you're fantasizing about an act that is not part of the repertoire with your partner, you are leading your brain away from your goal. Let that sink in. I'm going to say it again because I know a lot of people don't understand this. So if you masturbate and you go to fantasy and you're thinking about something that's not part of your reality, you are reinforcing pleasure with that unreality. You are taking yourself away from what you're trying to create in your life. And again, the hijacker in your brain might make a million excuses for why that's okay, but in the most regulated parts of your day or your life, sit with that for a minute and recognize either everything you do moves you towards your goal or away from your goal. And if you're working hard to stay out of the screen, leave porn and establish an amazing life, masturbation most likely is not part of it. Okay, but if you want to attempt to include masturbation, using what I call masturbation meditation can help you go from every day to every three days, to every seven days, to every, every 17 days, to every 21 days, to once a month, to never. So let's go for longer and longer streaks, recognizing your brain needs it right now. And going cold turkey can be really difficult and it can throw you back into the habit and it can even induce the chaser effect where you try to stay away for a few days, then you slip and before you know it, you're in a full blown relapse going hardcore to get as much dopamine as your brain can get. So let's go for longer and longer streaks. I don't usually like to share that on the podcast because it kind of gives people license to cheat in recovery, but do it very intentionally. Every single day, either track on paper or track it in your mind, paper's preferable as, as neuroscience dictates it, as we've talked about before, but track it and see, are you doing more things that move you towards your goal, purpose and work, your relationship, especially your sexual relationship and your hobbies? Are you doing more towards your goal and less away from your goal every single day? That's what I want you to do for the next month. Get longer and longer streaks and feel how your brain feels when you get to month, one month of no masturbation. People tell me all the time in my 90 day program how amazing they feel and they had no idea that they could feel that way. When you feel like you've come up with a perfect excuse why masturbation's okay, that's the hijacker in your brain, the compulsion. Now, I wanna speak for one second about how if you watch a lot of videos from a lot of professionals that are out in the world on different streaming services, you'll find professionals telling you that not only is masturbation fine, that it's healthy for you. What those professionals don't know or they're not taking into account is the compulsive nature of masturbation. So for a person who was never exposed to masturbation when they were young or never built the habit, and especially never coupled it to a super normal stimulus like pornography or high level sexual fantasy, 
those people don't have the same need to get that high level of dopamine. So those other professionals are talking to the very small percentage of the population these days that don't have a dopamine dependency from masturbation. That is not you, most likely. So they're talking to the 1%. I'm talking to the 99% of young people because pornography has become rampant and it actually barely has a stigma anymore because everybody's doing it. It's kind of like the new smoking. Back in the 50s, everybody smoked, everybody thought it was cool. Guess how many people smoke these days? Hardly any. So porn's the new smoking. So just because your friends are doing it and it's normal doesn't mean it's healthy. So just to wrap up here and to go back to what I said originally, what we're talking about here, it isn't good and bad, whether masturbation is good for you or bad for you. It's a matter of, is it a healthy habit or is it an unhealthy habit? If you're doing it too much, if you're doing it frequently, if it's disrupting your relationship or your sex life, if it's leading you away from what you want, it's an unhealthy habit and it's got to go. So become the top tier person that you want to be who doesn't need an emotionally immature, self-soothing habit to get through your day or your night. You will be so psyched that you did. Now, before I wrap up, I want to give you this motivation to, you know, persevere in a pathway that might be challenging for you. When we start to uh, wear out and to let weed over the old, old neural pathways we've been taking for a long time, it creates discomfort. You don't know what to do. And it's much easier to let an old habit die that's unhealthy when you're establishing a new healthy habit. So find a way to get healthy, high levels of dopamine from your life. Find your hobby that feels the best for you and make sure you're having lovely times with your honey. Because what I want you to know is you can do this. You can leave masturbation behind and you will be glad that you did. You will look back at it as a self-soothing tool that you used for a long time and you can think to yourself, that's okay, that old version of me needed it. But this new version, this rocket out bad arse version of myself, it doesn't need it anymore. I have this toolbox of healthy mood regulation activities so I can move into a new season of my life and crush it with a healthier brain. So you can do this. I want you to know that nobody's ever died from not masturbating. You won't be the first. Okay, if you're looking for help in this journey, please go over to drtrishlee.com. I have an awesome erectile dysfunction program, Three Steps to Heal ED at Home. Uh, people are in it. People are loving it. Please get into it if you struggle with erectile dysfunction. If you know you can't stay away from hypersexual behaviors like pornography consumption or masturbation or anything on the continuum of screen brain syndrome or hypersexuality, please check out my 90 day complete essential guide. If you wanna know what your brain is doing, if you wanna know how many areas and the magnitude or the levels of dysfunction in your brain, please schedule a QEEG brain map brain scan with me. We can spend an hour together. I'll show you and your brain exactly what it needs to heal. And if you're not ready for any of that and you just wanna to talk to me, I offer consultations in a really limited capacity. I'd love to talk with you if you haven't told anybody about this struggle. Telling a person can be your first step to acknowledging that you need help in this journey, and I would love to be able to help you with that. All right, until next time, control your brain or it'll control you. I'll see you then.